They're not coming to Clinton County to stay in Clinton County, and that's been our experience. The hope of asylum in Canada attracted thousands of migrants to the irregular border crossing on Roxham Road in Champlain for six years before Canada shut it down a year ago. Add to that an influx of migrants crossing the Canadian border now into the U.S. in the past year, and many have ended up in Plattsburgh, where most of the county's services are located. Most often, we are, you know, obviously they need food or they might need a temporary shelter for, for the night, but most often we are um, asking them if they have resources in other areas of the country, um, and that's really what they want. The migrants include people from all around the world, including Mexico, South America, and Africa. Christine Peters, the county's commissioner of social services, says the county provides short-term assistance to migrants who qualify. That includes bus tickets to New York City and even other parts of the country. We have sent people to Texas, we have sent people to Washington State, we have sent people to Florida. Um, there's really kind of no, we don't have a limit because we want to send them to where they have people. Peters says it's unclear how many migrants are living in the county at any one time, though they do have some numbers for how many migrants were put into local motels under what's known as the Code Blue Rule that requires the county to shelter people when temperatures dip below freezing. In a five-month span starting in October, the total number of migrants housed was 190 households. We probably had 13% of the individuals that presented for after hours were migrants. So it varies, it really does them in flow. We don't really see any patterns. We've been looking for patterns, we don't see them. The arrival of migrants from the border led the Clinton County Legislature to pass a resolution recently, calling on the state and federal governments to send more resources to the northern border. Peters and members of a local nonprofit humanitarian group say until that happens, it's their job and mission to try to help. I know our community did not ask to be kind of on this route. It's nothing that we've encouraged or promoted, but they're in our community. I think one of the most uh, painful parts of this whole um, humanitarian crisis is that so many people are just not seen. They're invisible. They're in crisis. Um, they don't speak the language. They uh, don't know how to ask for help. They don't have a backup plan. These are people who are, ha have gone to the end of the world, so to speak, to try and find safety and secure some security for their families. Two milks, two beans and rice. Volunteers with Plattsburgh Cares gather every few weeks for a single purpose, to fill hundreds of emergency aid bags that are filled with homemade hats and gloves packaged and canned foods, toiletries, water, and a card with the words peace, love, and safety in different languages. The emergency bags are being handed out to immigrant families ending up in Plattsburgh who have gotten turned back trying to cross the border into Canada and ended up stranded in the U.S., or they are among the immigrants crossing the border from Canada into the U.S. The migrants in need are getting help from the county, but if they aren't eligible, then it falls to groups like Plattsburgh Cares to step in to help. I think if that group and other you know, faith-based organizations um, that are helping individuals that aren't eligible, I think it would be a struggle for those individuals because there are individuals that come into our lobby and we can't help because they are not eligible based on the documentation they're presenting to us or they have nothing, they have no documentation. So, you know, if that's the case, we, we really are not able to help them pursuant to our regs.